Hello and welcome to another playbook. We are starting a new series of mental models and I'm starting with one of my favorite mental models, inversion. Right, so the next set of playbooks, uh, every week we'll try and put out at least one playbook on a new mental model and this one is on inversion. So let's let's jump in. Who all have used inversion over time, right? And that's that's the important question, right? So it started with Stoic philosophers, uh, what they labeled the premeditation of evil, of evils, right? So Stoic philosophers essentially said that, hey, you know, what's the worst possible thing that can happen? So they would imagine their life uh, in the most miserable way possible. What if we lose a limb and are not able to work? What if we um, don't have a job? What if uh, we lose our near and dear ones? And then they would imagine the worst case scenarios and sort of the premeditation of evils and figure out what would life be like. And then they would do the inverse, which is, okay, if all these things can happen, then what are the ways in which we can avoid these things from happening? So Stoic philosophers did this uh, quite successfully. It, it's still one of the most successful philosophies and a lot of people live their lives uh, by it. Mathematicians have used inversion. Carl Jacobi very famously said, invert, always invert, solve some of the most difficult mathematical problems by inverting them, by reversing the problems and figuring out what the problem isn't, right? Investors, Charlie Munger is, is, is sort of uh, famous for saying, uh, you know, we have to avoid stupidity at all costs, right? So his, his entire thesis on investing is not about making brilliant moves, but ensuring that he doesn't make any stupid investment moves. So that is another form of inversion. And of course, in product building, we, we use something called a pre-mortem. We imagine a day after launch and we imagine that the product has failed. And then we try and figure out what were the things that led to this failure? What were the decisions that we made? What were the things which were in our control which led to this failure? And then what were the things which were not in our control which led to this failure? So inversion is used all across the board from philosophers to mathematicians to investors to product building. Pretty much all the great thinkers in the world have in some way or the other used inversion. So how can you use inversion in your day-to-day -day life, right? But for that, let's first understand what is inversion. So consider the opposite of what you want. Now, most people are very good at thinking forward. They are very good at figuring out what are the things I need to do to get from point A to point B. But very few people think backwards, right? What is stopping me from getting to point B and how can I avoid it? So one needs to do both. One needs to think forward and one needs to think backwards simultaneously, right? So there are three steps in any inversion exercise. The first step is define the problem. What do we want to happen? Now, this is the way most people think. They define the problem and then they try and figure out what do they want to happen. But in inversion, there's a step two, invert the problem. What do we not want to happen, right? What is the worst possible outcome? And then third, we avoid the above at all costs, right? And in this way, we essentially figure out the path that for two to not happen, what are the things we should do? And in a way, we will end up doing one, which is we'll end up at the path of doing the right thing. So let's take an example. Suppose you were thinking about your next career move, right? And what you're trying to optimize is your satisfaction and your joy. So what is the best possible job for me in the world, which will bring me great joy? Now, that's what you want to happen. So step two, invert the problem. What is the worst possible job for me in the, world, in the world, which will make me miserable, which will not bring me any satisfaction? Now list down what are the kind of jobs you think will, will absolutely make you miserable, will you know bring no satisfaction to you. And then do step three, avoid it at all costs, right? So essentially by inverting, you're trying to figure out what you don't want to happen and that will give you great clarity on what should happen and how you would make that happen. So now let's jump into a bunch of different uh, examples, right? Another example which I really like is, so, you know, companies talk, always talk about being more innovative. So a company says, hey, how can we be more innovative? But the inversion of the problem would be, what would help us become the most uninnovative company in the world? Or what would stop all innovation in the company? And now let's avoid all these things so that we don't become an uninnovative company. Right. So that's that's a classic inversion technique. So let's let's try and see how inversion is used in different facets of life. Health. How can I lose weight? Inverse the problem. What can I do to put on more weight? And now all the things which will help you put on more weight. I should stop exercising. 
i should eat more carb rich food right i should eat more food right i i should uh, not go for long walks all these things will help you put on more weight avoid all of them and by avoiding all of them you will also get a sense of like what are the things which are actually the reason for why i have put on weight and control them right so this is this is where inversion becomes a really really powerful technique wealth right how can i become rich now that's a question a lot of us think about a lot of us try and figure out the forward path to becoming rich but thinking about how can i lose all my wealth right so if i don't save my money if i don't invest it properly if i uh, i can lose all my money if if i invest it poorly in the same type of uh, stock right what if i invest my money in 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 real estate and all of real estate crashes and it's an illiquid asset so i can't get my money out right so essentially people will talk about diversification and talk about uh, how to make more money or or, or invest in assets which are not connected to uh, the stock market and to the outside e- economy you know invest in art etc all these are fine but if you, you should also very clearly know what are the things you do which can help you lose all your money right and then avoid them at all costs managing people so suppose you're a people manager right and the forward question that everyone asks is how can i become a great people manager but the question we should all ask is how can i become a terrible people manager and the answer would be micromanage insult people in front of everyone make sure you don't give feedback to the people at the right time and if you list down all these things you know that these are the things that you should avoid you should you should give people feedback on the right time you should always ensure that if there is any negative feedback that you want to give people you know you do it in in private so that's the way you avoid so there is no magic trick to becoming a great man, people manager all you have to do is avoid becoming a terrible one relationships now this is something i think about a lot how can we i be a good husband right but what if i imagine the inverse how can i be the worst possible husband in the world and the answer would be you know i should be violent i should abuse my wife and i should not speak to her and you know i should i should give her the silent treatment or be passive aggressive and again there you have it a list of things that you should not do and avoid being a terrible husband and by default by doing the inverse you would become a good husband right uh, so which is why inversion is is something that we can use in every aspect of life now as product builders as engineers designers and product managers how can we use it for product building right so let's look at a few examples suppose we were running an e-commerce company and essentially we want to build the fastest checkout flow for our users so how do you build the fastest checkout flow for your users lots of ways lots of forward thinking ways you can do it but imagine the inverse how can we make sure that the user is not able to check out fast you know give him the login prompt at the wrong time make it really difficult for them to fill in their address don't give them enough payment options right make it very difficult for them to see their uh, checkout cart right make it very difficult for them to delete items or add items to the cart and there you have it all those things are things that you should avoid to ensure that your users have a smooth checkout flow now if you are a video ott and you essentially you know a user comes to your product and you want to make sure that the user starts playing a video so how can i how can we make sure that users start playing a video every time they come to our product to our app think of the inverse how can we make sure that users never start a video whenever they come to our app and how can you do that so suppose a video had left uh, a user had left a video halfway through make sure that that's not visible on the home page right make sure that when a new episode of a series is added don't add that on the home page make your search really really difficult have a very cluttered ui make sure that you give so many options to users that there is no way for them to figure out which episode which show which movie they want to watch and there you have it you have a list of things that you should avoid at all costs so personalize your experience make sure that things that they were already watching are the first things that are stacked up ready for them to use and you have you have a list but by using the avoidance technique you have a list of things that you should do in your user experience to ensure that whenever a user comes in right there right in front of them they have it's the easiest possible decision for them to click play and start watching a video right so these are the different ways in which we can use the inversion technique both in our personal lives and at work and while building products it's a really really powerful technique Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video on our first mental model inversion. We'll be doing a lot more videos on mental models going forward, and I hope you're enjoying the playbook series. Uh, so do subscribe, uh, and uh, see you next time in another playbook. Take care. Bye.